I just got me some man-sized tools, so let's build a plane. Welcome back everybody. When we last met, I was having trouble getting uh, 227 foot-pounds of torque on the Glen nut after installing the flywheel. So I went out and bought some three-quarter inch sockets to go on my fancy new three-quarter inch torque wrench. Um, and they weren't bad. They're about forty-five dollars for a set that went from. I uh, don't know where I put them right now, but uh, basically from about an inch to an inch and a half, and then also the equivalent sizes and metric because I wanted to have both on hand, even though I don't need the SAE right now. I just figured, why not? We'll just get that. And I also ended up ordering a uh, Craftsman three-quarter inch. Uh, ratchet. Now that I own some three-quarter inch tools, I might as well, uh, you know, have a ratchet to go along with my torque wrench so I'm not abusing this tool. And so anyways, now I have a three-quarter inch socket. It's 36 millimeter. Fit on the end of... That magnet's strong. Uh, so that fits on the gland nut perfectly. Uh, now the problem we're going to solve today is... Holding the engine stationary so I can hopefully apply the right amount of torque. I've got a few different things in mind. We're going to see how this goes, but as usual, I'm going to kind of wing it. And I'm going to try and keep this video short, but uh, for the most part, this entails me installing the accessory plate on the back of the engine and then installing the engine on my engine stand. And obviously that's on wheels and going to roll around. So I'm thinking about rolling it over to the edge of the, the mezzanine here and getting the fork truck, bringing it down stairs into the warehouse floor. And then I think I can put my fork truck blades across the bottom feet of the engine stand. That should hold that more than stationary. And then it's just a matter of whether I can exert 227 foot-pounds of torque on that gland nut or not. So that's the plan. Wish me luck and follow along. Okay, I'm going to try and be a little more organized. That should lead to a little shorter video. Uh, make it a little easier for you. A lot more editing on my part, but... Um, I'm organized. I pretty much got all the parts I need right here in front of me. Got the tools I need right here in front of me. So this should go pretty quickly. I got my Duncan. So let's build a plane. Okay. I didn't do much without you. Uh, first steps were to bend the lead tab. 90 degrees on the magnetron units. So I did that on both units. Um, these have been sitting since 2017 when they were first purchased. And the silicone wires had sort of a gray silicone dust on them. So I wiped them all off. They look good now. I imagine, uh, I mean, they're silicone wires, I would have guessed. So I don't know if silicone oxidizes or something to that nature over time, but uh, it was a little bizarre, uh, bizarre. I'm making up words now. A little bizarre, so I wiped it off. We'll see if it comes back relatively quick or not. But let's get the magnetrons mounted on the accessory plate. Uh, pretty straightforward. I bent the leads 90 degrees and on the magnetrons there is a stamped in lettering that says this side out 
Uh, in this case, that means that needs to point to the front of the engine. So um, I have the accessory plate with the engine side facing up right now. couple of Allen head screws and very tiny little uh, brass nuts, but they seem to uh, develop a bit of a tension, but I don't see a nylon, nylon, nylon insert, so I don't know if they're, um, they've got a thread that uh, is tapered, sort of like a pipe thread or something, or or why, but uh, they're going to tighten down and, and kind of double as a lock nut, I believe. Um, so, which is good because you're going to have no access to the back of this plate. And that's a very bizarre, I go again with the new words, very bizarre size. 5.5 um, millimeter nut driver. I've owned this for 20 plus years and I can virtually promise you it's the first time I've ever needed a 5.5 millimeter nut driver. So good purchase, uh, past Mark. Uh, came in handy. Snug fit. All right. Kind of confused because I think one of the next steps is to adjust these. And I have no idea how I'm going to get behind there. And I don't believe I own a 5.5 millimeter wrench. But what they do say is to install these in their lowest position, which is closer to the center of the, the rotating mass to, um, to ensure clearance of the, the magnet for the initial setup. That's interesting. Tight fit. Okay. Then you're gonna have a long and a short lead. Short lead keeps going in the direction that uh, it's facing and the longer lead gets a 180 degree bend to come towards the other side of the engine. We don't have to worry about that for right now, but I was just remembering that so I figured I'd point it out.
the Allen key's an odd size too. It's, I believe, a 3.5 millimeter, which are not common in most of the Allen key sets you, uh, you find. So I had to go downstairs to the machine shop and I've got this one drawer of random Allen keys that I've been acquiring for uh, well, decades now, really. And, uh, you know, strange little Allen keys you have left over that come with, uh, I don't know, Ikea furniture or, or whatever whatever else. And uh, you always end up with those extra tools. I keep them all because uh, they come in handy. A lot of times I'll use them to uh, modify them, uh, bend them, weld them to something. Um, create unique new tools. You know, it's, it's nice to have a, a junk drawer rather than go messing with my uh, my decent tools. I think the problem is is the the bolt size is uh, probably pretty close to the hole that's bored up the shaft of the nut driver too, so it doesn't give you much wiggle room when when removing. You got to come straight out. All right. Magnetrons are on. Uh, next is to bolt the assembly to the back of the engine. You can't see from there, so I'm going to move the camera temporarily. Okay, there's three bolts that thread directly into the casing. Then there's one bolt that needs a nut on the back side. So I'm going to start with uh, one of the three that goes directly in the casing. And as you're looking at it from the rear of the engine, you want to be able to read the arrow V serial number, all that fun stuff facing you and obviously upside right. So, uh, Gently push later into place, make sure nothing's hitting. And yeah. What'd you do wrong, Mark? I'm a giant dummy. I <laughs> For some reason, I was thinking the magnet was going to ride outside the magnetrons, so I put the magnetrons in there closest to center position, and that's not the case. Uh, magnet revolves inside the magnetrons. I need to quickly reverse that and slide the magnetrons to the farthest outside position. So. Look at that, slides right up to the casing now. Who would have thought?
25 foot pounds. Man, that bolt seems excessively long, but better long than short. Oh, it almost felt like it bottomed out though. Well, they give you four washers. I guess I'm going to go with the assumption that they want you to use it on this face. Okay, I'm gonna try out. Uh, oh, let me move that. Try out another one of the new torque wrenches today, the uh, 3 8 drive. And I also, just so you know, I ended up buying a new half inch. So now for these Lexi Vons or whatever they are, I have the full set. I have the quarter inch with the um, inch pounds. Uh, three eighths, half inch, and the beast, the three quarters. So I will continue to use those and give my feedback as we go along as to whether they're worth the darn or not. So I was happy with the construction and the feel of the uh, three quarter inch. Uh, that's why I kind of felt comfortable. Uh, getting the full set after that. Let's see here. I love new tools. All right. Foot pounds on the outside. And... That there's 25. You all know I like to confirm everything I torque at least twice and occasionally more because, well, this is supporting an aircraft engine, so can we be too cautious? All right, 25 foot pounds. All right, let's put uh, those wires out of the way. Let's uh, get those up tucked somewhere. I still haven't gotten all the plugs. If I did, I would put those in position, but uh, 
For now, I just want to get this thing secured on the engine stand so I can get that, uh, what's it called again? Hub nut, gland nut. Get that thing torqued properly. Okay. Let's see here. Um, man, is that going to give me enough? Whew. That's going to be close whether uh, that torque wrench is going to be able to get in there or not. Huh. Let's see. I think I bought some extra washers. I'll space it back as far as I can. I suppose I could machine some spacers. Um, let's see how much room we need. That's a no. Um, the mount is hollow. If I have a long enough half inch extension, uh, it's not gonna. I bought a set of. Um, Socket adapters, everything from quarter inch to one inch. Um, let me grab it quick, I'll show you, it's easier. All right, I don't know the quality, but it's uh, uh, quarter inch to three eighths, three eighths to quarter inch flip flops, halves to three eighths flip flops half to three quarters flip-flopped and three quarters to one inch flip-flopped so i'll be able to do anything i want now uh but i would need to figure out how i would do this so i would do the three quarter inch to half inch on an extension through the tube and then go back from half inch to three quarters all right, I think I can make this happen as long as the uh, as long as this beast fits down this hole, which is kind of does, kind of doesn't, um, because of the welded seam in the tubing. Will I be able to get this? Well, I suppose I could mount it in there. We're going to mount the socket in place. <laughs> then we're going to mount the engine stands to the accessory plate. And then we're going to get the whole thing on the engine stand. Then we're going to configure extensions to go through the center tube here all the way to that socket so sometimes you got to get pretty damn creative all right let's see what we uh we end up with I'll tighten everything up firmly before I uh, get too crazy. 
Yep, can see right down the pipe, and that's all I care about. Between the deep socket, the two ex uh, the two adapters, and I'm pretty sure I got a good six inch, uh, half inch uh, extension down there. I don't know what that does for the, um, how that affects the torque wrench with all those variables in between. So I, uh, obviously that's flex and uh, tolerances between uh, parts. So I don't say I want to over torque it, but I want to over torque it just a, a tad to see what happens. Um, so that's going to be, I think these are half inch, so I think it's going to be three quarter inch. I don't have a three quarter inch wrench up here, so that's going to have to wait till it gets downstairs. All right, let's uh, snug down the mounting bolts. We can do that. All right, so far so good. Let's get it on the engine stand. Okay, how hard can it be, right? It's just an engine. That's a good size drop. I'm at least a foot plus off the floor. Um, <laughs> there's no way for me to get around the front of it and try and cradle the engine. I'm not sure I can uh, do it this way. So now a smart man would take the fork truck, bring the engine crane up. Pick the engine up, get it off the counter, and proceed from there. Am I feeling lucky? Okay, maybe I wasn't feeling lucky today, and uh, or maybe I'm just getting smarter. We'll figure that part out later, but uh, I decided to get downstairs, get the engine hoist. Um, only chain I could find was 5 16 chain, which is a bit excessive for this little bit of weight. I've wrapped it through the, uh, the mounts to the plate. Anything gets a little rubbed there shouldn't make a difference. I did wrap around the propeller hub. Um, that should be just fine. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, see if we can pick this up. She's in the air. kind of hoping I'd be able to spin this around, but I really didn't leave myself enough chain to do that. Um, we'll figure it out.
comes in handy. All right, um, maybe that might work. Funny bone. Amazing how that's never really funny. I have to say that was a little less trouble than I thought it was going to be. Can't complain about that. It's also like a 20 foot chain. Chain wants to stick to the magnet. That's just the beginning. I gotta get it downstairs now. So, all right. I don't know if I wanna try and relocate the cameras to show this or just focus on not destroying things, but uh, I'm gonna put a plan together and I'll be back. I made it down safely, so let's see how well this works. I have the fork blades across the legs of the engine stand, so that should give me any weight that I could possibly need. And um, yeah. All right, she shouldn't go anywhere, so. Let me zoom the camera in uh, more on what I'm working on. Lighting down here is not going to be fantastic, but you can at least see what I'm doing. Okay, let's see. I'm going to see kind of where I had this torch uh, upstairs while I was wrestling with it. So right now I am set to... Hundred and fifty foot pounds of torque. So, oh, I forgot. I need to. Uh... I'm remove that and that. Ah, oh, man, that magnet.
All right. Sockets on the glam nut. And let's see. Well, that's going to work well. Well, she was at 150 anyway. Sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, two hundred. Let's try two hundred. She was at two hundred. Two ten, two twenty, two twenty seven. that much. She moved, uh, trying to say maybe five degrees, six degrees. That's all she moved. Now we're going to double check it just to be sure. Yep. All right. We were really, really close, but now we know for sure. I'm going to double check my numbers on my Rich. What a relief. I wasn't far off at all. Like I said, I would be surprised if that, uh, if that nut turned five degrees. Um, so yeah, we were really, really close upstairs. Uh, might have even been satisfactory, but now we know it's good for sure. And on to the next stages getting this thing back upstairs. Wish me luck.
All right, I'm back upstairs and let's finish this part, which is just adjusting the magnetron height off of the magnets. Do that with a 10 thousandths piece of shim stock that the kit supplied. I looked and looked and looked. I could not find a five and a half millimeter wrench. I could not find a seven thirty seconds wrench. I found a six millimeter wrench, which seems to kind of hold the nut as it's sort of in position. I'm hoping that uh, it seats tight to the back of the plate and I can uh, just get a bit of torque with a little pressure from that. So, all right, let's see what we got here. They say to uh, put a little bit of a curve into this shim stock so that it's easy to get in. I need to uh, rotate the engine. I believe that's the 19. Yeah. That looks to be just about centered up top. All right, chin stocks in. All right, primary ignition timing is set because it's fixed. So next step is to, I believe, the uh, trigger shaft installation. So. Pretty simple. Nine sixty fourth hex drive. Do we have one with us? Uh, metrics. Sure, I brought up metric tools, and now they want SAE. What do we got here? That works. Okay. And let's see here. We need our blue lock sight. Two forty two. Um, I 
can't find it. It's on the front of the engine. Okay. That might be a bit excessive. We can share with the, the next one. All right. So the T trigger hole gets aligned with the T trigger hole here. All right, just tighten them like a normal bolt pattern. I feel like I should be doing something evenly though, even if it's not a particular foot pound. Let's uh, start with, let's start with something simple. Fifteen foot pound. That might be a bit much. Let's back off a little bit to ten. Fighting the magnets. Come on. Let's go now to that. We'll go to fourteen. Fourteen is a nice round number. It's like lucky seven two times. All right. I said I didn't want to make this video too long because I know the last one was pretty long. So, um, yeah, a little bit more done here. We have our uh, crankshaft uh, grub nut, gland nut, hub nut, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that's finally torqued to 227. Our accessory plate is mounted. Our magnetrons are on and set for height. And our trigger shaft is now installed. So, uh, yeah, we're quite a bit closer here. So, remember, if you like what I'm doing here, you know, subscribe, like, share it with your friends. Um, help me get more subscribers. A lot of people are viewing these, but not as many are actually subscribing. So, let's help spread the word. And as always, thanks for watching.